Hey guys, I'm Brandon. I'm down here at uh, what we call Ground Zero, the testing grounds for all of our Garmin products. Uh, what we'll be walking through today is the Zero X1i crossbow scope. The overall goal today will be getting this mounted on our crossbow and starting to shoot some arrows down range. All right, so let's go ahead and dig into the box. So, uh, first thing I'm pulling out here is the data cable. Um, you'll be using this for any software updates or anything that you need to do down the road. Um, second thing we've got here is the instruction manual. You can read through that. Third thing, this is the trigger cable. So um, there's gonna be two ways that you can trigger a range with the crossbow scope. One will be a button on top of the scope itself, and the second will be this trigger cable, which will walk through how to get that all installed as well. Comes with two um, lithium ion AAA batteries, uh, as well as an Allen wrench tool to help get the initial installation done. And last but not least is the crossbow scope itself. So I think we're ready to get this thing put on the crossbow. All right, guys, so the first part of the process is to go ahead and get the batteries installed in the device. So we're gonna go ahead and take these covers off and that's gonna give us access to the battery door over here. We get this battery door off by pressing this little clip right here and it'll pop right open, open for us. So previously mentioned, it comes with two AAA lithium batteries and we'll wanna make sure that we get these oriented correctly while we're installing them in the device. So there's some plus and minuses, so just make sure we get those lined up. And then we'll grab that battery door cover and we're gonna go ahead and there's a little catch point on the top of the device. We're gonna catch that there and then just apply a little bit of pressure here at the bottom and you'll hear it click into place. And now it's fully seated and we're ready to put the scope on the crossbow. To do that, we're gonna start by loosening three points on the bottom of the device two bolts here, and then a piece that we call the lock knob. To loosen these two bolts, we're gonna go ahead and grab the Allen key that came in the box and loosen those up. All right, so once those are loose and you've got some nice play in it, um, you can go ahead and slide it over the top of the Picatinny reel, like so. Snug it up a little bit with the locking knob, but don't fully tighten it yet. All right, so then go ahead and tighten these two screws up here. So each setup on the Picatinny reel is gonna be a little bit different for each shooter. Um, you have the option to come back and move this forward or move this back, depending on what you see in the sight window. All right, so those are snug. Let's go ahead and tighten them up. All right, now that those are nice and tight, I'm gonna go back to that locking knob one more time and just make sure it's nice and snug. All right guys, so we've got the scope mounted to the crossbow and we're ready to start the setup process. Before we do that, I wanted to cover the four buttons on top. So there's one here, the ranging button, and there's three others here on the side. One is the okay and power button, and then we have two up and down buttons. So to start the process, we're gonna power the device on by pushing and holding the okay button. And while doing that, I'm gonna be looking down the scope and you'll see the zero logo pop up. And the first thing that it asks me is what language do I want to select? So I go ahead and hit OK on the language that I want. If I need to select a different language, I can use the up and down arrow keys. So the next prompt in the window here is asking me, what do I want to use, yards or meters? I'm going to go ahead and select yards with the OK button again. Here I'm being prompted, do I want to start the calibration process? I've got two options to select either yes or I can enter a demo mode. I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. All right, so the prompt I'm now seeing in the screen is asking me what colors do I want to use? There's several to pick from. I'm gonna go ahead and pick green to do the setup today. So the next prompt I'm seeing is asking me to set the brightness of the display. So one thing I wanted to touch on quick is there's what's called an ambient light sensor built into the scope. And what this does is it's gonna naturally adjust that light depending on the settings that you're in. So if it's early morning, it's gonna adjust. If it's midday, super bright, the brightness is gonna automatically adjust for you. So in doing the setup process though, again, I can use those up and down keys to either make it brighter or make it dimmer in the screen. So now what I'm seeing in the scope is just a quick note to let us know that the device is set up to go to sleep every 30 seconds during the setup process. If that happens to happen, all you need to do is push one of the keys and it'll wake back up and you can pick back up right where you left off. So at this point of the process, it's letting us know that our end goal for this next step is to start to set our distant different ranges. So for example, it's gonna be 20, 30, and 40 shown in the display. All right, so here we're using the up and down keys to move the 20 yard aiming point, which is the top 
more highlighted of the points shown there to set the height within the housing. All right, so we're at the point now where we've got the crossbow cock and the bolt loaded and we're ready to take our first shot. The goal of this first shot is to make sure that we're in the ballpark so that when we back up to our 20 yard shot, we don't completely miss. Um, typically we shoot for about five steps from the target before we take the shot. As you can see in this first shot, we actually hit a little bit low and a little bit left. Um, what we'll be prompted to do next in the device is to start to make those small adjustments to get this um, arrow or this bolt closer to the center of the target. So the next steps that we're gonna do is start to make a few small adjustments to the position of the scope on the crossbow. To do that, there's two um, adjustments that can be made. One is for up and down and one is for left and right. Um, our particular instance, we were roughly six inches low and maybe one inch left. So you'll get some instructions on the inside of the scope or within the display that tells you that 30 clicks on each one of these equates to one inch of movement on the target. Before we make those adjustments though, we need to remember to loosen the lock knob. All right, now that both of our directions have been adjusted, the last step we need to do is go ahead and re-tighten that lock knob. When tightening the lock knob, you need to ensure that it snaps all the way over to ensure that it's tight enough. And we're ready to recock the crossbow and take another shot and see where we're at. Again here, the goal is just to make sure that we're in the right ballpark. Um, and hopefully those small adjustments that we just made will kind of make the arrow go closer to the center of the target. All right, so as you can see, those small adjustments made a pretty big difference in terms of where our bolt is hitting on the target. So now I think we're ready to back up to 20 yards and continue the calibration process. To do that, we're gonna be prompted on screen to take a range. Since we haven't installed the cable button yet, um, we'll be using the top button here to take that range. All right, now that we've taken that range and confirmed that we're at 20 yards, we're ready to go ahead and shoot another bolt. All right, so after we've taken a second shot here at 20 yards, we've noticed that we're still off a little bit. So we need to go back in and make some similar changes like we did at the very close range. So the first thing we're gonna do here is where it's gonna ask us, did you actually hit the bullseye? We're gonna go through and select no. And then again, it's gonna ask us how far did we miss, left or right, up and down, and how many inches. Make the up and down adjustments. Make sure you're staying in that same spot at that 20 yard range. And now you've provided a new 20 yard aim point. Let's go ahead and take another shot. Here we were able actually to hit the bullseye dead on. So we're ready to move on to the next part of the process. All right, so now that we've confirmed that we're on at 20 yards, we're actually done with the entire mechanical portion of the setup. Everything from here on out will be done electronically. The next key step here is entering in your bow speed. You've really got two options for getting this bow speed. One, you can go ahead and send a few bolts through a chronograph or you can leverage the uh, manufacturer's advertised bow speed. If you opt to go through and leverage the manufacturer's advertised bow speed, um, we actually have a validation process that we'll walk you through here at the very end of the process. Here you can leverage the up and down keys to select different values. Once you're done with that specific number, hit OK to move on to the next. All right, so there's our bow speed and we're hitting Enter. Because we did opt to go ahead and, and enter in the advertised speed, we're gonna walk through that validation process. To do that validation process, we're gonna start by backing up to 50 yards. Again, here we're able, able to leverage the ranging capabilities to validate that we're actually at 50 yards. All right, so here we're presented with our 50 yard aim point. So we'll take a shot. This shot ended up hitting just a little bit low. So we're gonna walk through a very similar process at this point, we're pretty well dialed in on left and right, so everything will be done electronically within the site. So we'll scroll on down and let it know that we did not hit the bullseye. It's asking us here if we hit high or low. Go ahead and let it know that we hit low. And we hit roughly two inches low on that shot. So we'll go through again and enter in that, that data point using the up and down arrows. All right, so that aiming point has now been adjusted for us. So we'll walk back through the, the shot process one more time just to confirm it. 
So we hit the bullseye dead on that time. We're going to go through and let the device know. All right, so now that we've walked through the validation process, it's actually letting us know what the estimated bow speed is. And we've now completed the setup process and are ready to shoot out to 80 yards. All right, guys, so, so as we talked about earlier, there's actually two ways to trigger our range. One is by pushing the button here on top of the device. Um, the other is by installing this cable trigger. Um, in the box, you'll find three different things. So there's two of these button clips with adhesive on the back. One is flat and one is concave. Depending on where you uh, want to put the trigger button and what that surface looks like will dictate which of these you pick. Um, the other handy piece that we include is some tape, some very adhesive tape. So what you'll do first is you'll actually plug it here into the back of the device and then you'll put a small twist on it and that locks it into place. All right guys, well that's a wrap for today. We appreciate your time and checking out this video. I hope it's helpful in getting you set up with your Zero X1i crossbow scope.